This science experiment comes to you from Mystery Doug. It's in the Works of Water unit um, called Erosion, Earth, Surface, and Landforms, and What is Strong Enough to Make a Canyon. So the original experiment on Mystery Doug is slotted to take an hour. So I condensed it for you into less than 10 minutes. So if you do want to see more and watch the Mystery Doug version, you can find it on mysterydoug.com. Hi everybody, it is science experiment time. Earlier this week you did an experiment with water and you saw how water moves from high places to low places. So today we're actually going to talk about how water can change the shape of land. Yes, it's true. Did you know that water can really be that powerful? Um, I'm going to show you today with some simple supplies. Uh, I have to use brown sugar because it is dark outside but I think at home you could just go outside and use sand or dirt from the garden um, you shouldn't have to use brown sugar a funny story I can only use brown sugar for this experiment because as I was carrying everything downstairs to make this video I was carrying too much in my hands and I dropped the container and it burst open and brown sugar spilled all over the floor so anyhow this is now my science brown sugar to make landforms and I am going to have you do this experiment with me. If your parents have a printer at home, they can print out the worksheet that goes along with this. I attached it to your fresh grade. And um, if you don't have a printer, then you could just draw the pictures in a journal or on a lined piece of paper, and you can still do the activity with me and then take a picture of it when you're done and send it back. So that's what you need, a double-sided worksheet for this one and some brown sugar, some cups, a uh, clear container. I just got this from Recycle. This is my little container to make my hills, a sharpie, a ruler, spoon, pencil crayon, and then um, I'm using this from my Recycle. You could use a plate or a paper plate if you have one, and then a piece of Lego to prop it up, and a cookie sheet. So the cookie sheet is just to really contain the mess. So that's it. So what we're going to do first is we actually have to build our land. Have you noticed when you look out the window, the land is not all flat around here. There are parts of the land that goes up, making mountains and hills, and there's parts of the land that go down, making valleys and canyons. So why isn't the land all flat? Well, over time, and we're talking a lot of time, a long time, over time, things like water can change the shape of the land. There's other things too. There's, there's earthquakes, there's... Um, volcanoes, there's other things that can change the shape of the land too, but today we're just going to investigate how water can change the shape of the land. So you'll need to be a good observer and watch carefully for any changes that you notice while I'm doing this experiment. So what I'm going to do first, I have this little um, container. You could use anything really, anything that you would use to make like a sandcastle at the beach. And I'm just going to scoop my container and pack it with brown sugar and then empty it out on the plate. Oh, look at that lovely hill. Actually, it's a plateau because it's a hill that's flat on the top. It's so pretty. I'm going to do four of them. One, two, three, four. Okay, so let's pretend this is a, a process that took millions of years. Well, tens of thousands for sure. And there we go. Okay, here's my hills. I'm going to now just take my spoon and I'm going to add one more scoop of sugar, kind of to fill the middle. Oh, that's just lovely. There you go. There's your plateau. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, knowing what we know already this week, that water moves from high places to low, I need to make one side of my plate a little bit higher. So I'm just going to use Lego. Thanks, Eddie. And I'm going to prop it underneath my plate just to, to raise it up a little bit. Okay, so now my plate is actually on an angle, angling downwards a little bit. Next step, ruler, two cups, and I'm going to place my cups on either side of my plate like this, so that what this is, it's, it's like a movable rainstorm, I guess, or the holder of the rainstorm because the rainstorm comes from here. This is just a recycle applesauce container um, and you just need something to poke a hole in there. So about the size of a pencil crayon. Toothpick hole was a little bit too small. The drips were way too slow. So you might need an adult to help you in this part. I'm just going to push down a little bit and twist until the pencil crayon pokes through. See? And then I'm going to also just come through and do it from the other side just to make sure there's no plastic covering the hole. There you go. 
I'm going to draw myself a blue arrow to show where the hole is so that you can line that up over top of your brown sugar plateau. And I'm just going to lay it over the ruler so that the dot is not blocked, the hole is not blocked, and the water will be able to drip through. Now my vantage point of my document camera here isn't quite perfect, so hopefully you're able to see what's going on. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my rainstorm cup so that it's over top of the brown sugar. And I'm going to leave it in the same spot because what we're testing here is how one rainstorm after another, multiple rainstorms, changes the landform. If you keep moving the cup over different spots of your sugar, you're not going to have it in the same spot. So are you ready to see what happens? So of course, after my first rainstorm, I'm going to go to my worksheet and just write in my observations. So I'm just going to pour in a little bit, like a two second pour. One, two. And then I'm just going to watch and see what happens. And you can wait until it finishes dripping or you can just, you can just um, let all the water drip out or you can, I guess, add more water before it's done. It's up to you. You can see the hole that I put in my cup was actually quite big. I just slid mine back to show you this is what happened after the first rainstorm. So then I would go to my worksheet, record what I noticed and then bring it back. And I'm going to look at from the top and put the hole right over top again. And now I'm going to make it rain a second time. One, two. Oh, I have some interesting things happening. So I'm just going to pull it away so you can see. Interesting. Some more changes in my land. Brown sugar dissolves really quickly in water, so there's going to be some remarkable changes. You might not have as much changes if you're using uh, soil from your garden. Pretty cool to see. I'll just add one more little pour here. Here's rainstorm three. Holy smokes. I've got some trouble going on if you're a house at the base of this plateau. So there you go. That's after rainstorm three. So I would go back to my worksheet, flip it over and draw a picture. What do you observe? And then of course now rainstorm four. Ideally when you're doing your experiment, don't move your cup because you'll be able to watch and then it'll be precisely in the same location. Okay, there you go. Rainstorm number four. All right, well, let's record the result. You can see I, I have something significant here happening. In real life, we would call this a landslide. So the water has done so much damage to... Oh, there, it rained a little bit more. That's the rest of the water from my cup. The water has done so much damage damage to this land that it's just totally slipped away. It is on a slope. Remember, I raised the plate a little bit with the Lego, but this happens in real life. You get water rainstorm after rainstorm, time after time after time, and it just destabilizes the slope. And then sometimes things just, they give away. We call that a landslide. Sometimes it just makes a kind of like a crack down the middle and there's still the hills on either side. We would call that a canyon. I'm thinking of the most famous canyon in Arizona and the United States called the Grand Canyon. Maybe some of you have been there before on a holiday, but that's a, a massive, huge crack or canyon into the earth. And guess what that was caused by over many, 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 many years? Yeah, flowing water, river. So sometimes when it rains, you can get flash floods and things like that in the canyon because there's still a lot of water movement through the bottom. And also you can get some other things. Maybe you would only have half a slope that would slide away. Uh, you might get some sort of cave forming because just parts of the rock would be worn away by the water. Uh, you won't always see such drastic changes. If I'd be curious to know if you use dirt to see what kind of results you got with your experiment. But that's it for today. Have fun um, experimenting with land. Maybe make some different types of mountains. Try some different things. Try some higher pointier mountains. See what happens when you drip water over top. You can also make a smaller hole in your cup so that the water doesn't drip out as fast. And yeah, just experiment. Have fun. Bye.